Hello, everybody. I hope you had a good launch. Uh, so I'm here indeed to present a bit how to guarantee high accuracy positioning for agricultural applications. Uh, let me start with this, and this is actually a very interesting picture. Actually, this is people migrating, people migrating from the north of America all the way to Texas. And this is actually in the years of the 1800s. So it was very interesting because these people actually were coming to America uh, to the to Texas area, where, which used to be Mexico back then, in order to work in the land. And actually, they will get, in return, some, some land behind it. Uh, so it's, of course, very interesting because migration is one of the topics that is actually very interesting. Actually, Stephen Austin is considered the father of Texas. And actually, he's the one that uh, basically helped all these people to come to Texas and actually develop the, the whole state of Texas, which is, is uh, actually quite a prominent there. So, Actually, when you take a look at what's happening with uh, agriculture, and this is actually uh, um, um, the data that you will find from uh, European Commission in terms of the EU agricultural outlook between 2017 and 2030, you can very nicely see how basically labor is going to decrease by about 3.2% every year. So actually, uh, this is a very interesting plot behind it because that means that automation has to be there in Europe as well. But it's also quite interesting because they have another plot where actually they also uh, estimate that there's going to be a lot of investment and extra cost in innovation side as well. Um, who's Septentrio? Septentrio is a company developing high-end GNSS uh, accuracy technology as well. Uh, we, our main focus is actually to provide reliability positioning, and this is actually something that we have as our main flag behind it. Uh, we are busy with different type of applications, uh, so we have different know-how from industrial markets, from scientific markets as well, and also now robotics as well. Uh, and our main goal is actually to be an OEM provider, not necessarily a vertical provider. We will we'll never making, be making robots or something like that. We just create a positioning element behind it. We are based in Belgium, that's actually in Leuven. Uh, we are about 110 people. Uh, we have offices, offices actually worldwide. Uh, it's actually where the beer, Estela Artois, is actually made, so it's actually in Leuven area. So we have a good beer, we have good fries. I don't know if they are Belgian or French fries, but they are. <laughs> we have good fries as well there. And something that we have is a good access to technology. We have actually the KU Leuven University there, but we also have IMEC. IMEC is actually a very important research institute for nanotechnology. So we have a lot of spin-off technology that comes, comes from there in order to make our technology quite reliable and quite smaller as well. Terms of applications, as I was telling you, these are some examples only. We have uh, applications all the way from uh, basically the, the big ships, machinery, uh, maritime side, uh, all the way to some type of robotics as well, uh, like NIO, a robot that is also using, uh, thankfully, our GNSS receiver there. Uh, but of course, we have had already some experience with uh, different type of harsh environments, and this is where we are trying to make a, a difference. It's, it's basically we have vibration and other type of environmental things that we help with our, our technology. Uh, drones is actually an important market. Uh, we have been uh, already seeing that uh, explosion of the market uh, side in the drone side for mapping technology. Uh, but we are also busy in, in other technologies, autonomous driving as well, and other autonomous uh, robotics as well. Our solutions include uh, different type of uh, modules. We have all the way uh, from modules, and actually I'm very happy that uh, here we have uh, what we call the Mosaic. The Mosaic is the latest module high-end Genesis technology that we have in September. This is actually all the high-end Genesis technology put into a very small module. Um, but we also have, of course, other systems, so we give the flexibility to our customers to integrate either a board or a system or basically a smart antenna for an easy startup as well. So uh, we have systems that are pure Genesis, but we also have Genesis INS because sometimes orientation is also quite important in uh, robotics, and uh, we have seen it also in some of your use cases as well. When we take a look at the, uh, at basically what has happened in agriculture, uh, we go all the way back to the 1900s, and we have, of course, the mechanization. Then the Green Revolution started to come there with fertilizers, pesticides. Then precision agriculture started to be a, a, basically a, a buzzword behind it with guidance systems. And now, of course, everybody's talking about digital uh, farming as well, and uh, precision farming, of course, that was already there. But two important elements that I get to see here 
is robotics and drones. And we have seen these two elements, as I mentioned to you, I've been quite, quite lucky to work a lot in the UAV industry and to see how that has developed. But robots, uh, uh, especially in agriculture, they are having certain similarities also in that side. But in general, the trends that we get to see is people are moving from large vehicles to small vehicles. Uh, people are trying to focus not only basically on the data, on the analysis, but also on the actions of the robots as well. Uh, from manual operations to autonomous operations, uh, from one single single robot all the way to multiple robots that could be cooperating each other. Uh, so some people in the drone industry, they call it swarms as well. Uh, and of course, accuracy uh, of a centimeter level accuracy becomes also an important element there. So it's, it's very interesting to see that. And then I, I call it the double A, and it's not the alcoholic acronyms, but basically this is the, the double A I get to see in robotics side, which is basically analysis and action your robots are making some analysis. You have different sensors. I, uh, I'm very happy to see some of, of your companies doing sensor uh, technology behind it. But you also have actions done by the robots as well. And basically, these two um, analysis and action are requiring some accuracy, but also reliability elements as well. Uh, I was very happy to see yesterday many people were wondering about what's happening with reliability, security of my system. Uh, and this is actually something that we take very seriously in our GNSS technology as well. So our flags is actually having high accuracy, reliability of our systems, availability. You want to have as much RTK or centimeter level position as much as possible. And the security is also an important element behind that. So when you are choosing GNSS technology, there are different elements. Of course, you want to say, OK, do I want to use GNSS only or GPS only technology? Uh, do I want to use basically centimeter level? But also some people might want to include an IMU to have basically the inertial and to have a, a reliability in difficult environments as well. Orientation is another element, and I have seen some robots that actually want to have a proper ori orientation when they are doing the actions as well. Low power, I was very happy yesterday. People are talking about uh, battery and basically the lifetime operation of, of the robot uh, as well, endurance basically behind it. And we have technology that is uh, very low power, allowing this type of uh, basically uh, battery operated systems to work uh, in long duration. Um, ease of use, and I think it has been quite clear that in order to have these robots, basically, you want to have an ease of use. RTK for certain people is kind of a new thing as well. So we try to make sure that this ease of use is also integrated into our systems and that you have a more transparency centimeter level accuracy as well. Environmental, many people forget about it, but your robots maybe are, are working in difficult environments. Actually, they are vibrating, they have land, etc. Some GPS receivers are actually not robust in that element. So you need a reliable GNSS po positioning as well there. And again, reliability, security, the risks that you might have in jamming, spoofing, or uh, even security elements are also quite important. Um, just to, to judge the aspect of spoofing and jamming, and actually uh, some people don't even know what is GPS spoofing and jamming, but actually uh, spoofing, as you can see here, basically is just a signal pretending to be another signal, and basically it's not destructed, but it looks like somebody's pretending to be somebody else. So your GPS will pretend to, to be in another location, and therefore your robot could also be moving to another location. Jamming is actually uh, destroying the signal. You can buy um, a $50 uh, dollars, um, jammer in eBay or any basically website, and actually you can jam up to kilometers uh, away also from, uh, from your system as well. So it's, it's things that you want to consider. And many people talk about saying, OK, we have technology for that. But they don't all have uh, basically the resilience against all the type of jammers or spoofers as well. So in our technology, we have interference mitigation, but also the way to monitor. When you are making your robot, you can mitigate basically problems of that, because sometimes interference comes from this uh, robot itself as well. So this basically takes me to the uh, conclusion of my presentation. But uh, we ba basically see that reliable genesis is needed for both analysis of your data, to have precise information, and to the actionable data as well of your robots. Um, we have accurate and reliable uh, GPS measurements, which will help you basically to have also sensor fusion. There is a lot of sensors, cameras, lidars, people talking about that. So you need also reliable measurements of GPS on that side. 
autonomous systems basically will uh, need to be safe. And I think uh, we have heard that a lot. So people, you need to also consider some of the elements of reliability and security uh, when you are choosing the navigation component of your robots as well. So basically, this is where we are here to help you. Uh, we had a boot as well uh, here uh, in the show as well, which is boot F3. So if you have any questions, just let me know. <laughs>